Well, let me present you my capstone project for Android Nano Degree from Udacity. Okay. First of all, let me install the application. See, instead of uh, pressing the run button here, which is good, okay. I already have created a release version of it, and I put up uh, click this to install the application. I uh, press this Gradle task called install release. So once you click it, you wait for like half a minute, and you see the application installed on your device. So let's start. Let me register first. Okay. I put my username. A fake email for now. I put a fake email for now. And I don't know, a fake password, whatever. <coughs> I should wait for a while. You should wait for a while. Okay. Now you see several tabs here. Okay. Each tab represents sources, news sources. The first tab is USA, we have BBC News here, Al Jazeera, etc. Uh, okay, let's uh, put a widget. Okay, let's see the, how the widget works. So, this is Android 8.1. I repeat, Android 8.1. So, this is how you add widgets. You click here. And you have the widget. Okay, let's put here. Now this widget update corresponds to the appropriate uh, tab. The tab that was clicked as and displayed on the application. So you see here uh, you have a source, it's Jamie Merrill. I don't know, I don't know who this guy is. And you see here, okay, if we go to Daily Mail, you see the tab is being updated, the widget, sorry, is being updated. So let's go to ABC News, okay. You see that the tab for ABC, the widget for ABC News is updated as well. Uh, when I register, Okay, my information, the user information, is stored in Firebase uh, Cloud, Google Cloud. So, let me renew and I will show you my, the user, okay. This is me, Where is it? this is me, I registered just a few minutes ago. Uh, as, a, as an administrator, I don't see the password of the user, okay? Uh, the authorization is done by Google Firebase, which is good. You don't have to worry about it. Like SSL requests, token ID authorization, etc. Uh, the only th bad thing about Firebase is that they don't have operations, they don't provide you with operations such as uh, filtering, Searching, okay, join. So I'm hoping they will fix that as well. I mean, what if the user want to search, have some information? Uh, what if there, there is some information, okay, on the database, and the user wants to search, he can't do it with Firebase. As, as I said, probably they might need to put this operation in the future. So let me go back to the app, okay, uh, let's say that uh, I click on this one, okay, article, uh, the user can share it if he wants, okay, I'm going to do, I'm not going to share it now, he can comment, comment, okay, let's say, hello, from Greece. <laughs> okay, I put submit comment and you see the user is here. You see the comment is here. I have the title, the body, 
the author of the comment, which is me, okay, and the date that the comment was put on the database. And I can see that comment on the database. Okay. So this is a comment I made. Do you see it? This is a comment I made. Hello, the date, the time and everything. Now the user can also add this movie, this uh, not movie, use <laughs> article as favorite. Okay. Let's um <coughs> let's add some more. Okay. okay, so I have this option. Uh favorite news, I can click on it and I, I can go I can unfavor it if I want. Now this is how I do it. I have an SQLite for this, okay, with a table called favorites, and I access this SQLite database with a content provider. What is a content provider? It's a better way to access uh, an SQLite database because it, it decouples your main activity from the database, okay, and you can read the data in a background thread. We can query the data in the background thread, which is good in our case, okay? Uh, many people don't uh, appreciate the importance of the content provider. Uh, there are many tutorials out there. Uh, please go through. Go through tutorials like uh, inserting JSON data to a database through content provider, okay? That would be very helpful. And another thing I would like to mention is that I fetch the data with a task called async task loader. An async task loader wrapped in a loader class provides you uh, fixing the issue, help you, help you to fix the issue. Issues like uh, rotation, device rotation. Okay, so let me show you here. Okay, I go press this button to rotate. See, usually what happens is that when you rotate the device, the it crashes many times. Okay, if you don't be very careful, you have to uh, use a class or a method that will store your list data, all of this data, in a, either on a bundle object with all save stain instance method or you can use a loader class. Okay, what is a loader class? You can search it on uh, Google. It's a very useful one, I don't know, and many people don't know it. Okay, many people don't know about this. Uh, also, as, a, as an administrator, I can delete the user if I want. I can uh, delete his comment. Okay, I will delete this comment, for example. See, uh, I have two nodes here, one called users, and this and its node displays the name of the registered user, and another node called comments, and that node contains uh, different uh, objects like comment author, comment body, comment title, date, new title, user ID. So let me log out, I can also log out if I want, okay. I also have an option here called forgot password. Now it's not going to work for now for me because I didn't put a real email. If you put a real email there, if you register with a real email and somehow you forgot the password, you enter the email there and then you will get uh, a message to your email back uh, with a link. And you click that link to enter the new password. That's it really. And this is done by Firebase as well. So let me log in. First of all, let's uh, put something wrong. Okay, let's let's put nothing here. See, I have this uh, validation working. So let's put a wrong password. 
I should say that I cannot log in. Okay. Again, all of this is done by the backend. And that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. And I recommend you to study Android. Happy coding for me. Bye.